Here in Kerala, we have a wonderful nautical and maritime history that's closely linked to the beginnings of the United States Lifesaving Service right here in our shadow. We have also the Lighthouse. And the reasons those institutions give us to this day such a wonderful heritage is because of their linkage to a wonderful maritime trade that occurred for years off the coast of North Carolina, primarily in the age of sail. Many of you are probably familiar with the phrase graveyard of the Atlantic. And the reason for that is the very treacherous sandbars and tough weather that occurred with so much regularity just off the coast. In fact, the reason for the existence of this lighthouse and this life-saving station was to protect the lives of those folks who became shipwrecked on these shores. Even to this day, an aerial tour of the Outer Banks reveals hundreds of shipwrecks off the coast. We're very proud to this very day of our connection with our nautical and maritime history here in Kerala. The life-saving service in and of itself is pretty simple to understand. In the age of sail, as ships plied the North Carolina coast en route, for example, from Cuba to New York, from New York to Charleston, as you came around the Cape Hatteras Outer Banks, which juts pretty far out into the Atlantic, famous for wind, of course, because of the Wright brothers, these ships would come into distress and hazard themselves upon the sandbars and become lodged on the sandbars. The life-saving stations usually were about six to eight miles apart. And the surfmen of these stations were called surfmen because they literally waded into the surf to help victims of shipwrecks, would patrol these beaches on foot. And many of the stations had small towers where one individual could get a vantage point of a broader expanse of the sea. And then foot patrols would look for shipwrecks. And when we would find these things frequently at night, hence the lighthouses, the surfmen would immediately take actions to begin to wade into the surf and in many cases, swim out to these shipwrecks. If they were closer to a station, horses would bring down what were called Lyle guns that could shoot chairs out into the rigging of a ship and transfer people from the shipwreck to the beach. We see that in today's Navy, as ships will call breaches buoys and transfer personnel between ships. That's what occurred and that's why they were called surfmen. These life-saving stations, which dot the coast of North Carolina and in many cases, the Eastern United States have very much of a military connection. In fact, the very forerunner of what today is the United States Coast Guard was a combination of, at the time, the Revenue Cutter Service, that was the ship side of the Coast Guard, the Life Saving Service, which was the land side, saving those shipwreck victims, and then the lighthouse service. And at a point in time, those three things came together and became the United States Coast Guard, which saves lives locally to this very day. The Coast Guard, as we know, is a military connection. The life-saving service, lighthouse service, and many of our ships at sea have that same military connection directly linked to Kerala. Kerala, for example, just north of here, the Wash Wood Station up in the four-wheel drive community was built in 1917, just recently celebrated 100 years. World War I was occurring at the time, war off the coast of North Carolina. The Congress of the United States appropriated some additional money during wartime to build more of those stations. So the life-saving station that's right here in the parking lot is the original Kill Devil Hills life-saving station. Originally was built in 1878, one of the oldest wooden buildings on the Outer Banks, very close to where the Wright Monument is today. In 1986, the owners of that station decided they wanted to move forward with another vision for their piece of property. And they contacted my father and said, if you come get this station and haul it away, we'll give it to you for free. So my father cut it into four pieces and moved it up Duck Road. And that was a very different time when you could still move things up a very simple two lane road and reassembled it here in Kerala. It is the original building and is maintained to this day in the same architecture and the same character as the station would have looked when John T. Daniels and members of that famous surfman crew helped the Wright brothers create modern aviation. In many cases, the life-saving stations themselves became the heartbeat of community. I jokingly say they were the community colleges of the Outer Banks before we had a community college. They had kitchens, they had family members, they had surfmen. The surfmen would in many cases live in the station seasonally 
during bad weather, which meant the fall, the winter, and the springtime. In summertime, we have much calmer weather. That's when the surfmen would commercial fish, commercial hunt, make nets, and do other things to earn a living. But the stations themselves were very much the educational system and the social center of the community. In fact, as you look up and down the Outer Banks to this day, many of our towns directly trace their beginnings to a life-saving station. So it's a remarkable maritime heritage up and down the Outer Banks.